Hi and welcome to Neat AI. This one is all about the famous Cactus Kev hand evaluator for poker. He's a guy who got bored one day and coded up a hand evaluator that beat the best available at the time. I've included part one for completeness. So a long time ago, I used to write poker bots just for fun, playing for real money on the penny stakes tables. The card counting blackjack AI I did last month involved coding up an object model for a betting table, which included a dealer, decks, cards, and opponents. Really all that's missing for me to use it as the basis for training a poker bot is a fast hand evaluator. This is a function that will allow me to rapidly compare poker hands to determine the winner, and also let me compare a poker hand's strength relative to all possible poker hands. Typically, when people start out, they build what are known as naive evaluators, which involves sorting and rearranging the cards, as well as some logic which tries to run through all the different possibilities. But ultimately, this tends to be a bit frustrating. What's really needed is a function which can take any five card poker hand with the cards in any order, convert this into some number, and use this as the index in a lookup table to find the correct hand ranking. What's meant by hand ranking? Well, there are nearly 2.6 million five card combinations in a deck of 52 cards, but we don't need to rank a hand strength compared to all 2.6 million combinations. And this is because there are a lot of different hands with an equal ranking. These two flushes are different poker hands, but have an equal ranking. So how do we use this information to reduce the size of the search space? Well, if you assign each of the combinations to 2.6 million people, gather them together in a stadium, and ask anybody with a straight flush to step forward, you'll find that you have 40 unique combinations, but only 10 distinct combinations. And this is because a diamond royal flush will have the same ranking as a spade royal flush. If we do this for all the other hand combinations and distinguish between the unique and distinct groups, four of a kind drops from 624 to 156, straights get whittled down from over 10,000 to just 10, and so on. When it's all done, the stadium is empty, and we end up with a very manageable 7,462 distinct hand combinations. You can download a table with all of them listed out, from the best hand rank of a royal flush at number one, all the way down to an unsuited high card at the bottom of the list. You'll need this list to continue, so I'll add a link in the description. Before we get into it, I'll need to encode our cards with some information. I'll set bits based on the card value, its suit and rank, and I'll assign a prime number to each card. I'll explain why that's needed later on. The card rank is encoded in four bits, so a two will be a zero, a three will be a one, and so on, up to an ace, which will be a 12. And the prime numbers will increase sequentially up to an ace, which is set as 41. By way of an example, here's the encoding for the king of diamonds. Bits are set for the king card identifier, the diamond suit, as well as the rank and prime number. All that equates to a very large number, which now has encoded within it all the information we need, and it can be extracted using bit masks. This only needs to be done once, and is repeated for all cards in the deck. For this method to work, only three questions need to be asked when ranking a poker hand, but they must be asked in the correct order. The first question is, do I have a flush? If the answer is yes, then I'll retrieve the hand ranking from a lookup table. If it's not a flush, then the next question to ask is, do I have a straight or a high card? In other words, are my cards unique? To find out, you check your second lookup table, and if it returns a zero, then you'll need to go on to the final step and check the last lookup table to get the hand rank. It's very fast, capable of ranking over a million hands per second on my old PC. So let's build our flush lookup table. We'll need an array with 7,937 rows, and I'll populate it with zeros to start. Next, let's grab that table and scan down through it, looking for all the flushes and straight flushes. When we find one, we'll need to extract the array index from the cards that make up the hand. For example, if we take the hand shown, we know it's a flush because there's an F against it in the hand column. I take the coded number for each card, and it's the 16 last bits in green that I'm interested in. This section holds the card value information. I need to perform a bitwise OR operation on the five numbers to extract all the card values, and then shift it to the right by 16 bits. The end result is a single number. In this case, it's 6,405. That might sound complicated, but it's really just one line of code. And remember, all of my encoded card numbers are just big integers. 
I'm only showing the binary bits data here so you can see what's going on. So I go to my flushes array to row 6405 and pop in the hand rank of 429 for that card combination. And I go through the entire hand equivalency table and I do this for every flush that I find. At the end of all this, I have a fully populated flushes array. Most of the entries are zero, but I can now use this to check the hand rank of any flush combination in the deck. And how do I do this? Well, that brings us back to question number one. Do I have a flush? Look at the example here. Clearly it's a flush, but how do I check it based on what we've done so far? The first thing to do is look at the bit patterns for the cards and apply a bit mask to them using a bitwise AND operation. If this yields a non-zero value, then we have a flush. That's the first check. So if we have a flush, we then look at the bit scheme as before and applies a bitwise OR operation to it and bit shifted 16 bits to the right. This gives us our array index and we can retrieve our hand ranking from that row. Double checking it against our original table, we find that we do indeed have the correct cards and hand ranking. But what if the answer to the first question is no, we don't have a flush? Well then I need to ask question two. Do I have a straight or high card? And to answer that, I need a second lookup table. So let's build the unique five lookup table. We need an array with 7,937 rows and I'll populate it with zeros to start. Scanning through the hand equivalence table, we can see there are only 10 straights, but lots of high card hands. Let's take the hand shown. As before, I need to take the coded number for each card and extract the 16 last bits in green. This section holds the card value information. I need to perform a bitwise OR operation on the five numbers to extract all the card values and then bit shifted to the right by 16 bits. The end result is a single number, and in this case, it's 4,760. And again, although that might sound complicated, it's really just one line of code. So I go to my unique five array to row 4760 and pop in the hand rank for that card combination. And I go through the entire hand equivalency table and I do this for every straight or high card hand that I find. And at the end of all this, I have a fully populated unique five array. I now have two fully populated lookup tables, which cover both flush and straight high card combinations. So if a hand I'm trying to rank isn't a flush, I must next check the unique five array and see what it returns. To do this with the example shown, I need to extract the card value ref from the five cards and use that as a lookup index. In this case, it's row 496, which returns a hand ranking of 1604. Checking that on the table, I can see that it's correct. Taking another example, I swap the six with an ace, turning the hand from a straight to a high card hand, extracting the lookup ref from this hand gives us an index of 4576 and ranks the hand at a poorly 6554. And again, checking the table, I can see it's correct. Swapping the nine with an ace gives us a final example. Clearly this should fail to find a hand ranking as it doesn't meet the criteria. Extracting the lookup ref from the hand and checking it against the unique five table, we get a zero returned. So it has failed and we must now move on to the final question to get its correct hand ranking. So what is left? As we're done with flushes, straights and high cards, what remains are pairs, three and four of a kind, and the full house hands. This is where we make use of the prime number attached to each card in the deck. Cactus Kev recognized that as the product of any set of primes is unique, he could use it to define any poker hand in the deck. Multiplying them together gives an order independent reference number. So he created an array with 4,888 rows and populated it with the prime product of all the remaining hands. And he did this by applying an appropriate mask to extract the prime number from each card. In the example hand shown, the prime product gets inserted into row 4220. 
The array is then sorted in ascending order, which moves our example to row 682. We kept a track of the hand rank and used the row number from the prime product array as an index into his final table, which stores the hand rank. All of these lookup tables only take milliseconds to populate on startup, and of course, you only have to do it once. So if we take the pair of fives in the example, it's clearly not a flush, so this check will fail it. It will return a zero from the unique five lookup table, so that's a fail as well. So we'll need to do our final check. The first thing to do is extract the prime numbers from the card's bit pattern, get their product, and then search through the prime product array until it's located. The fastest way to do this is using a binary search, so that's what Cactus Kev used. But it only works on a sorted array, which is why we sorted ours. Once located, we use the row number as the lookup index in our score table to get the hand rank value. Yep, that's how we did it. Can it also extract the best poker hand from a group with more than five cards in it? Lots of games have this requirement, including the ever-popular Texas Hold'em. You can do it using the Cactus Kev 5 card hand evaluator in a non-optimized fashion. You just need a function to loop through all of the 21 possible combinations and return the best hand ranking found. I've labeled the cards 0 through 6 and shown the 21 patterns you'll need to employ. So just how fast is it? Well checking it by getting it to rank 1 million hands gives us some benchmark numbers for the original routine. Under a second for 5 cards and just over 1.6 seconds for 7 cards. Not too shabby, but it won't be setting any records. 2 plus 2 and Sneezy 7 are 100 times faster, but they also use fancy hash functions and enormous lookup tables. But what's the enhanced Cactus Kev column for? Well, there's a way to make it faster, which is also easier to code and use. It involves going back to question 3 and throwing out the prime product and score arrays, and this also does away with the need for a binary search. The largest prime product possible is from the hand shown and it's very large, over 104 million. Actus Kev was of the opinion that it couldn't be used as a lookup table reference because, well, these numbers are too large. And maybe that was once the case, but these days it's not that big a deal to have such a large array. It's going to be mostly empty, of course, as we only have 4,888 hands left to classify, but it should be doable. I'll need to run through the hand equivalent classes again and use an appropriate bit mask to extract the prime number for each card. And instead of inserting it into an array, this time I'll use it as an array index. I've called the new array hand rank and it needs over 104 million rows, most of which will be empty. For the example hand shown, the prime product is 21021, which means I need to go to that row in the table and insert the hand rank value for that poker hand. In this case, it's 5517. Our example now will again of course fail the flush and unique 5 checks, so we extract the prime product and that gives us the hand card ranking. Checking its speed, I don't see much improvement in the 5 card row, which is a clear indication that the original approach was already well optimized, but it makes a big dent in the 7 card non-optimized evaluator. So now I'm in a position to start thinking about putting together a small population of neural nets and seeing how far I can go with them. If you're interested in seeing that, then you know what to do. As always, thanks for watching.